morning. It's probably a good idea to come inside today because, you know, the air, con air conditioning here, we've got four units here. Outside, we only have one, so it's going to be a lot cooler to be in here. Thank you for being patient. We're just waiting for our technical crew to knock out some little issues. Meanwhile, again, I welcome you and you know, prepare yourselves for this morning service. We'll start at any time.
while they are working away, I hope you are not sick of seeing my face, but maybe, <laughs> but what, well, it's good to see some new friends and some old friends, and again, I welcome all of you for this morning service. Um, perhaps allow me to uh, just say a quick prayer for our service this morning. So I just invite all of us to bow down our heads. I'll just say a very quick prayer. And we ask for God, and we prepare our hearts for him to be here this morning. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to once again give thanks to you. Lord, we know that it is such a good thing to be able to worship you together with everyone else all around the world, Lord, in this wonderful morning, O oh God. Lord, this morning we have some unexpected interruption, but Lord, we know that we are still here. Our heart is still preparing, and we want to come, Lord, to worship you, to give you the honor and glory to your name, O oh God. So, Lord, may you continue to uh, guide our hearts, and perhaps, Lord, may you use this time and opportunity in, in the silence, Lord, you prepare our heart for this morning's worship, O oh God. Allow each and every one of us, Lord, individually to bring our heart to you, that, Lord, you can continue, Lord, to um, speak to us. You can continue to connect with us, with your words, with the fellowship that you've blessed us with this morning. Lord, may you continue to show yourself and reveal your heart to us, O oh God. So, Lord, we give you thanks for this opportunity, and we pray that, God, you will continue, Lord, to um, be with us. May you continue, Lord, to uh, send your angels to uh, guide us and protect us, O oh Lord. And indeed, this morning, we just want to hand the time to you, and we ask that, God, you will continue, Lord, to lead us in this time. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done. And may you continue, Lord, to guide those of uh, our friends who are on their way here. May you continue, Lord, to give them safe journey mercy. May you continue, Lord, to um, prepare their hearts, O oh Lord, on the way here. And also I pray, Lord, for brothers and sisters who are worshiping uh, at home. May you also be with them. And at the moment, Lord, while they are waiting, Lord, for the uh, online service to be uh, present, Lord, we pray that you can also use this time, Lord, to prepare their heart. So, Lord, may you continue, Lord, to guide us and help us, O oh Lord, to turn our focus to you, Lord. Turn our attention to you. Listen to your word, Lord. Go back to the Bible, to your words. Prepare our hearts for the message this morning, O oh Lord. So, Lord, we just continue, Lord, to commit all this into your mighty hands. And we pray all this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Thank you very much. So, a very good morning to all of you once again. As I say, it is uh, great to see old friends, new friends, and we welcome you in the name of our Lord. And this morning uh, is a Holy Communion service. So, once again, I ask that you prepare your hearts, let, uh, let us all bow down, and let us start with a silent word of prayer before our Lord. to worship but let all who take refuge in you rejoice let them ever sing for joy and spread your protection over them that those who love your name may exalt in you for you bless the righteous O Lord you cover him with favor as with a shield I'll invite the worship team to take us through a time of praise and worship
Good morning, brothers and sisters. Let's rise and praise the Lord together. of God. as we sing about the goodness of God.
we sing this song, Lord, we are humble, we are humble by, humble by you because this morning we come here to worship the servant king. Lord, you've done so much for us. We thank you for your love, for your goodness, for seeing us, Lord, through every aspect in our, in, of our lives, oh Lord. Lord, we continue to experience your love and your goodness this morning. As we come before you, Lord, we humbly once again, Lord, confess and Lord, we put our, we confess our sins before you, and we ask, Lord, that you continue to, in your mercy and your love, Lord, to uh, forgive us and make us new, make us whole again this morning. And this morning we remember as well, it is the Holy Communion Sunday. Lord, you prepare our hearts, O oh Lord, that truly, O oh Lord, as we come before you, Lord, to partake, Lord, of your communion, Lord, you remind us, O oh Lord, that you have given your flesh and your blood and your life for us, O oh God. And we commit this morning to your hands. Once again, we commit, Lord, our lay preacher, Jusu, into your hands. We ask that, Lord, you be with him. You continue to use his words, the message that you've prepared through him. And, Lord, you continue to uh, use his uh, message. And that, Lord, we can hear it and can take, take deep roots in our hearts, O oh Lord. So we commit this morning's service into your mighty hands, O oh Lord. We thank you for everything. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please remain standing and let us affirm our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. I'll now invite uh, Reverend Kong to... Uh, Take us through the Lord's Supper. Uh, as we sing our first communion, 
Just one thing, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I forgot the number. All right, uh, the next slide. Next one, thank you. Christ our Lord invited to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. We invite the congregation to stand and let us recite this confession and pardon prayer. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thoughts, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not heard the cries of the needy. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, forgive us, we pray. Forgive our past, strengthen our future, guide our fu future to love and obey you in newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift out your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creators of heaven and earth. And also, with your people on earth and all the companies of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. Delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself out for us, he took bread, gave it to you, brought the bread, gave it to his disciple, and said, Take it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and gave it to his disciple and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of this almighty aid in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith together. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on this gift of bread and wine, May them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by His blood. By your Spirit, made us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministries to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at His heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Let us recite the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as this is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory 
forever. Amen. Be seated. Uh, brothers and sisters, um, when the Holy Communion is passed to you, please hold on to it. We will have a prayer together first, then we partake the Holy Communion. We invite those who are baptized to partake the Holy Communion. Okay? Okay, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord, as we continue to partake in the Holy Communion. We thank you for Jesus Christ who died for us and resurrected for us. And Heavenly Father, we uh, thank you for the righteousness that Jesus has, has uh, actually put on us so that, Lord, we can continue to stand before you and serve you. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for the grace and mercy through this salvation grace. And Heavenly Father, as we come to you, Lord, we continue to ask uh, for humbleness before you and also with the heart of repentance. So that, Lord, we continue to ask for your forgiveness and also at the same time, we forgive other people and also ask forgiveness from other people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, we invite all the Sunday school children, uh, Sunday school students to come forward uh, for prayer.
Yeah, come forward for prayer first before dispersing. Okay? All right, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this group of beautiful children. And Heavenly Father, we know that they are beautiful in your eyes. They are all you need. And Heavenly Father, we pray that, Lord, you will continue to impart upon them your heavenly blessing and shower upon them your love. And Lord, we pray that through Sunday school, they will continue to be grounded in a uh, Christian faith, and also at the same time, Heavenly Father, that uh, they themselves continue to enjoy a close relationship with you. And Heavenly Father, we pray that you will bless the teacher to have the heart to teach them, to have the love to care for them, and also to have a mind to nurture them so that they become disciples of Christ. And Heavenly Father, we pray for the children. Pray that, Lord, you bless them abundantly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Let us now turn our attention to the ministry of the word. I invite uh, our young friend, Bessie, to come and do the scripture reading this morning, followed by um, the message from uh, our lay preacher, uh, Brother Jusu. Today's scripture reading comes from John chapter 13, verses 1 to 17. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put in the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and, taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water in a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but afterwards you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, if I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, The only the one who has bathed does not need to wash, except for his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was about to betray him. That, that was why he said, Not all of you are clean. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your, teacher and te your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. May God bless all those who read and obey his word. Good morning, brother and sister in Christ. Yeah, I need a volunteer. Can I ask my wife to come? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to wash my wife's feet. <laughs> I haven't done it before <laughs> in the last 18 years. Um, both of us, no, um, 
the kids probably rewards our kids before whenever it's others. Yeah? Oh, it's okay. I, I can. Uh, I'll just need that to to. Uh, to <laughs> How do you feel? How do you feel? <laughs> A bit embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> we uh, I think. I just realized that the water is a bit cold. <laughs> yes, it is a bit cold. Do you usually wash um, your feet before you go out or after you come home? Why? Um, yes, I usually like to wash my feet before going to bed. Um, oh, even after having a bath, um, in, uh, you know, uh, earlier in the day, I still like to wash my feet before going to bed because, you know, uh, that the feet is the part that touches the ground the most and usually there's dust on it. Do you usually allow other people to wash your feet? Why? <laughs> I don't usually allow people to wash my feet, but I guess it depends on the relationship um, of the person who's washing my feet and myself say if Reverend Kong wanted to wash my feet I'd probably say no <laughs> so do you do you feel more comfortable watching other people feet or allowing other people to wash your feet oh yes <laughs> why <laughs> I think well I, I guess it depends if they have stinky feet <laughs> I probably will be more comfortable washing another person's feet. Uh, but again, I, I guess it, it depends on relationship. And like you mentioned, we wash our children's feet when they were young. And even now, we wash, you know, not their, um, their feet, their socks, everything, shoes and things. So it's relationship probably. What do you think Jesus' posture will be uh, uh, when, was when he washed uh, his disciples' feet? Uh, feet? Posture. Yeah, probably, posture. Yeah. He probably, you know, was down on the floor um, and um, must have been a very humbling experience for him as the son of God to wash his uh, disciples' feet. Yet, um, I think he, prob he did it because he loved his disciples. So. so if someone more senior than you want to wash your feet, would you feel uh, comfortable or uh, would you allow that? Why? Yeah, like I said, if Reverend Kong wanted to wash my feet, <laughs> probably not. It would be very awkward and and a bit, yeah, a bit embarrassing. Um, uh, but you know, if if it was to to teach a lesson like what we're doing now, then yeah, um, I, I'll probably I'll submit. <laughs> I'll submit. Thank you very much. <laughs> Let's pray together. Lord, we open up your word and help us to understand your word. And bless us um, and help us to follow your commandment. And uh, when we follow your commandment, oh Lord, give us strength. And bless us so that we, are, we will do it and follow your commandment um, with obedience and gratefully. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. So I ask my uh, family, uh, I need a volunteer. Can any, uh, I want to wash someone's feet. And then no one answer. <laughs> they call keep quiet so I know the answer. <laughs> so then I ask my wife, would you want to be a volunteer? <laughs> so, uh, so she's uh, willingly or happily to accept this. Now, uh, washing of feet, it's just an act of service. I'm not asking you go back and 
wash your husband or wife's feet. But it is to, it's to symbolize the service. It's an act of service. So I pray that we all learn, and I, I think there is a significant uh, meanings, uh, spiritual meanings, that Jesus did that to his disciple, and we will learn from this. Okay, in the first twelve chapters, John described the public ministry of uh, Jesus. So I'd like to say thank you to our pastor and uh, our local preachers uh, for preaching in the last twelve chapters of John in the past few months to give you um, a lot of uh, context and also to explain uh, Jesus' ministry publicly. And the last 12 chapter is built around Jesus' ministry and uh, his seven miracles and also progressively uh, review the seven I am statement of Christ. So Jesus said, I am. I am the breath of life. I am the light of the world. And Jesus said, I am the door. Jesus said, I am a good shepherd. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And you will see in our next um, few sermon series, and Jesus will proclaim that he is the way, the truth, and life, and the truth. Jesus demonstrated that he is the son of God through his ministry. So his disciples knew him and their faith grew by observing his ministry, by observing his service, by observing the miracles that he performed. Now for the next several chapters, starting from uh, chapter 13, which is the one that we just read, um, Jesus focused on exclusively on teaching his own disciple, and he will try to prepare them for what is to come, and also to prepare them to serve others. For this, from this chapter until uh, chapter thirteen, all the event happened in just a few hours, and the, this chapter described the Last Supper that oh, we all of us. Uh, very familiar with. It begins with a record of Jesus washing uh, his disciples' feet. And then uh, this is then followed by describing the relationship between uh, the master and, uh, and the disciple. Today, from this passage, I would like to focus on three points. I believe that this is also a teaching that Jesus uh, was trying to prepare his disciple for. Firstly, to serve others with, with love. In a previous 12th chapter of the book, uh, John, uh, Jesus uh, keep mentioning that my hour has not yet come. For example, in chapter 2, uh, verse 4. But in chapter um, 13, verse 1, uh, Jesus revealed that he knew that his hour had come. His hour has come to depart out of the wo this world and to return to his Father. Jesus, the Son of God, lived in heaven before. So he humbled himself. He came into this earth as a man to grow up and to demonstrate uh, using his life. And he was about to return to heaven. And we know, we know that after that, he will be new nail on the cross, die for us because of our sin. The washing of disciples' feet by Jesus is a very, very well-known um, event. I know that all of you probably very familiar with these verse, Bible verses. Verse 3 mentioned that Jesus knew that Father has given all things, all things into his hand. Now, Jesus is going to use his hand to demonstrate a, serve, a, a lesson. Use his hand to wash his disciples' feet and then wipe them with towel. This is a beautiful picture. When you have authorities but use love to serve others, it is much better than using the authority to, uh, uh, to uh, dominate others. 
to command others according to the cultures and the manner of that time, day. Um, the setting of the Last Supper most likely um, probably will be like the picture that I just showed you. The next slide, I think there's a pic picture. Um, the disciple reclined on slightly elevated uh, mattresses around a U-shaped table. It's very different from what we uh, traditionally see the, um, the painting. It's like a table, long table. In fact, the disciple most likely will lay on their left hand side of their uh, left arm and then use the right arm to reach out for, um, to reach for food and eat. Um, the, the setting is, is different from what we can imagine because the culture and you can see that uh, even the sitting position uh, have a significant uh, in the culture. Um, I think Jesus was sitting uh, at the U-shaped corner and John and Judas is on the right and left hand side and Peter sitting on the other side. There's a significant um, meaning in that. So uh, imagine all the disciples have probably walked for the whole day. They arrived and tired and famished and ready for a meal. The tower, basin, water have been prepared. But no one is willing or no one is available to wash their feet. So Jesus rose, rose from a supper and he lay aside his outer garment and took a towel and tied it around his waist, uh, uh, waist. And then he poured water into a basin and then began to wash his disciples' feet. And we know that during that time, at the most uh, used trans transportation is feet. Um, because most, of, most likely they don't have, not many people have animal to use animal as a transportation. You know, not many people can afford that. So most likely going from one place to another place, is they use, um, they, um, they have to walk. And therefore, food washing is something that is very, very common. And the disciple can relate to. And food washing is something to be done by a servant. Usually only the lowest servant will do that. Not even a normal servant who cook and prepare food will do this washing. And Jesus Wash his disciple feet. Not just one, not just Peter, but all 12 of them. To wash his disciple feet, Jesus has to. I asked my wife, what did you observe? And uh, yes, he has to lower his body posture. He has to bend his back. He has to even kneel down. And this demonstrates the humbleness, the humble, how humble he is. Did you realize that none of um, Jesus' disciples was his feet in return? Why? If Jesus asked them to watch his other feet, why didn't uh, the disciple wash their feet or allow Jesus to uh, allow um, disciple to wash his feet? Because the washing of disciple feet by Jesus has a significant uh, spiritual meaning. Firstly, only Jesus can cleanse. Only Jesus can cleanse their sin. And therefore, the disciples did not wash um, Jesus' feet in return. Secondly, Jesus wants to demonstrate the servanthood leadership to prepare them to serve others. And Jesus as a leader, and he demonstrated that. So verse 1 say, which, um, say that he loved them to the end. It's striking. Jesus knew that he would die. He would die on the cross in less than 24 hours. And Jesus humbled himself. 
And we know that he died on the cross because of our sin, that he might wash us clean. He, his blood wash us, wash, washes away our sin. The command of Jesus sounds very simple, but it is difficult to do. Have you ever complained about washing dishes, cleaning toilet, doing the laundry, tidying up your room, and so on and so forth? I have. I'm, I'm sure you, your kids have. Am I right? But even if we don't complain about doing this uh, boring daily chore, do we complete this task out of love? Sometimes I ask um, others, youngest people, and uh, would you do this? Uh, of course, I get paid. <laughs> we know. But to do this, to do this, what we call boring task, our love is challenging. We cannot serve others without love. Dear brother and sister, we can serve others, yes, by not just, not just washing the feet, but I know that all of us, in some way, we serve in the family, we serve in the church, but we can't serve without love. Because you can serve and go back home and then keep complaining. This is not what the attitude what God wants us to do. Therefore, to serve is act of service. But to serve with love is a relationship. It's your relationship with God and it's your relationship with one another. Secondly, to accept the service graciously. Jesus said, the one who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean. Jesus is referring to two kinds of cleansing. The first word, bathe, refers to a thorough cleansing of the entire body. So he means completely committed their life to God. He means uh, the salvation. So the second word, wash, means to clean only part of the body. So which means that we, we also need to cleanse ourselves, even though we are Christian, continuously from the sins of daily life. When we believe in Jesus, we were already clean. We thought we don't need to wash again. But because we live in this fallen world, we still need to be cleansed in our daily life. We need to pray to Jesus we need to cry out to God, Lord, help us. Because in this fallen world, we are facing many temptations. We are facing, sometimes we sin. Sometimes because of our weaknesses. And Lord, ask, we, we need to continuously to ask God to wash away our sin. If I ask uh, our brother Stephen to wash my feet, I think he would be glad to do so. Or, you, or, or uh, Uncle Daniel to wash my feet. He, I th I'm pretty sure if I want to wash his feet or their feet, they probably will not allow. They probably will be reluctant because it is embarrassing. Uh, why? They probably think that, oh, you are a local preacher, you are um, uh, a similar age as me, why do you want to wash my feet? And... Um, it's too embarrassing, too embarrassed. See, in verse, say, in verse 6, Peter said, ah, Lord, do you wash my feet? Peter had doubts. He was reluctant to let Jesus wash his feet because Peter knew that Jesus is his Lord. Jesus is his teacher. Jesus is his master. In order to allow Jesus to wash his feet, Peter need to be open. Peter need, uh, Peter need to be vulnerable. 
open. How can my master, my teacher, my Lord wash my feet? I'm pretty sure that you will do the same. If Jesus wants to wash your feet, you will, do this. you will ask the same question. In fact, he might think that I ought to wash his feet rather than allowing my Lord to wash my feet. Peter cannot imagine how this can happen. But when Jesus explained, it, explained that, if he did not wash him, Peter would have no part or no share with him. Our Lord Jesus Christ was mainly referring to the salvation. If we do not come to Jesus in repentance and do not let him cleanse our sin, we will have no part with him. We know that Peter do not understand because he asked Jesus not only to wash his feet, wash his hand, wash his head as well. So we know he, he doesn't quite understand it. But he will realize that after Jesus died on the cross for him. Secondly, to be vulnerable. Being vulnerable, being vulnerable means being in a position where other people can, uh, can hurt you, can potentially harm you. So it is very difficult to express our real selves and to ask for help because it feels vulnerable. It feels uncomfortable. And we are afraid of being criticized. Um, and when I was um, about secondary school, uh, and even in, enter into uni, I need to wash my. Uh, I need to uh, wear my shoes almost for the whole day. Sometime early in the morning, from seven to until nine o'clock when I come home, and my my feet smell. I mean, smell. Uh, I, I mean smell, because um, I'm very embarrassed to enter into other people's house, especially especially Chinese, because. In, that, in the culture, I need to take off my shoes. And you can imagine, it, I enter into someone's house, and I'm pretty sure after I left, they will need to clean the whole house. <laughs> so I, I'm very, I'm very, very concerned. So in Aussie, I, I, I go to Aussie house, I, I have no worry because I go there and I can wear my shoes. It doesn't that create that chaos. But I didn't realize that there's antifungal treatment for treating a common fungus skin infections. <laughs> so, uh, Dectarin cream, uh, I'm not selling this, there are other antifungal <laughs> treatment, I can tell you. Uh, I'm just, because it just happened that I used this and then uh, it, it, it helped me. And what happened is that, um, that, that my, my feet healed. So, I'm, I don't feel that embarrassed anymore. To allow Jesus to wash his feet Peter need to be vulnerable. So, I mean, he, he need to show his dirty feet. I mean, he need to show his ugly feet, even a deformed feet. Why I say that? Because Peter is a fisherman. As a fisherman, his feet was probably not like ours. Most of us work in the office, and our feet, feet are covered with good and branded shoes, sports shoes with... Uh, very good soul, and to protect us from dirt and injury. But unlike Peter, he probably doesn't wear shoes. And as a fisherman, it will be cut and probably uh, injury before. So I can say that. And, and also the, um, the UV sunlight, and it will look dirty and uh, ugly. Today, Jesus also come to you and want to wash your feet. Are you willing to be vulnerable and allow him to wash your feet? Some, are, some of you might say, oh, my feet are clean. I don't need to be washed. I don't need Jesus to cleanse me. Is that true? Let me show you the Ten Commandments. If you look at the Ten Commandments, next slide. Um, this is taken from our website. Ten Commandments, we know that uh, if you turn to uh, the Old Testament, um, you know that the uh, Ten Commandments, do you put other things above God? The first one, 
Do, would you rather spend your time on gaming, on, your, uh, on watching TV, uh, on uh, other hobbies, than rather than, than reading God's Word? May I suggest that some of us might even be addicted to these activities. Do you? Do you use God's name in vain? Do you swear when you are angry or when there's no one, no one actually around? Do you keep Sabbath day? Do you honour your dad and mum? When your mum asks you to help, do you, are you willing to complete the task in obedience? Or he has to nag, or he or she will nag to nag you in order for you to, for in order to push you to do the job. Are you addicted to pornography? Do you always covet others' uh, possession? So and so went for their um, holiday. This is their third overseas holiday. And so and so have a new Tesla. So and so have a new house. Peter allowed Jesus to wash his feet because he is willing to submit himself in obedience. He's willing to submit himself completely to Jesus. Today, Jesus wants to wash your feet he wants to cleanse you. Will you come to Jesus in repentance? Jesus can cleanse you. He can set you free. Are you willing to surrender yourself to Him? Thirdly, to love your enemy. Do you think Jesus knew who was going to betray Him? Anyone? Say yes. Yes. Most likely, because from the Bible passage, we know that, of course, he knew. Yet, he chose to wash Judah's feet. Even though Judas submitted to the foot washing, but he rejected Jesus. He betrayed Jesus. Judas brought men to arrest Jesus and identify him with a kiss for 30 pieces of silver. 30 pieces of silver in Hebrew culture. A 30 pieces of silver was not a lot of money. And in fact, it's only roughly about four months' wages. And Jesus died because someone betrayed him. For 30 pieces, four months' wages, yet, he sacrificed his life for us so that his blood can wash away our sin. Verse 11 says that Jesus knew he was going to betray him, yet Jesus was still willing to wash Judah's feet. Dear brother and sister in Christ, have you been mistreated? Have you been mistreated by anyone? If so, was your loss or was your suffering greater than what Jesus had to suffer for you? Would you be willing to bless others who mistreated you? Would you be willing to forgive those who, those who mistreated you? What Jesus did taught us to love our enemy. Let's read the, uh, verses 14 and 15 together. Let's together. If I then, your Lord and teachers, have washed your feet. Do you also ought to wash one another's feet? For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done for you. It's very clear that Jesus said, For I have given you an example. Now this is an example. Example of the act of service. It doesn't mean that you have to go back and wash your feet, uh, wash your uh, spouse's feet. Or, but it's a, services, it's a service that 
we are willing to um, take that and serve others. Let's prepare our heart to serve, not only to as an act of service, not only a task, but do it with love and obedience. Do it with, um, to build the relationship. That is the two aspects I would like to share. Dear brother and sister in Christ, Jesus himself has sent, set an example for his disciples, for you and for me. And the Lord showed us the lesson of washing his disciples' feet. We also ought to wash one another's feet. Not, liter uh, not literally, but by being willing to serve others with love. By being willing to accept service graciously. Sometimes I find that we're too, um, too polite. People want to serve us. We say, no, 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 no. Sometimes uh, a pastor or a leader want to pray for you, accept it, and be open and vulnerable. God will bless you. Of course, the leader need to exercise their discernment as well. And thirdly, being willing to love your enemies, to love those who have hurt you before. Jesus invites us to do just as he has done for his disciples and for you and me. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for setting an example for us. And it's a Bible passage that we read so many times. And Lord, help us to have a strength to serve others we love, to serve our enemies as well, to serve those who hate, hate us so that we can demonstrate to show the, the love of Christ. We pray all this in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us now prepare our hearts for the time of tithe and offering. Um, this morning's theme is taken uh, from th hymn 396. Um, let us all respond in faith. I'll invite the ushers to come forward. Give of the strength of your youth. Let us rise. Let in salvation's full armor join in the battle for truth. The doxology. Praise. 
be seated. Good morning, brothers and sisters. May the joy of God and the peace of God be with you. Uh, let us continue to welcome each other. Is there any newcomers among us today? The first timer? Any? Yeah. Have a look around and then give them a wave and shake hands. <laughs> uh, greetings. <laughs> Remember that we do have refreshment letter so that we can continue to meet out to uh, fellowship together. Okay? All right, we also welcome those uh, who join us online today. Uh, we uh, continue to pray that you can join us in physical service next time. All right, let us come to the notices uh, of the church. Uh, here we would like to uh, acknowledge and do a welcoming to our younger brothers uh, and sisters who are actually transiting from the Sunday school to join our worship service, okay? Uh, those are the names uh, on the PowerPoint, okay? We welcome you all. Uh, give them a clap. <laughs> yeah. I believe that a lot of them have already been confirmed uh, into our service, okay? So they are joining us as a member, you know, the learning members of the church. Okay? All right. Uh, next one. That should be the prayer meeting on this coming Thursday night. Okay? It will be led by a local preacher, Chris Ding. So join uh, through Zoom. Okay? Uh, we uh, pray that more and more people will join the prayer meeting. Okay? Because uh, we need to pray. Uh, particularly before we touch any ministries or we start any ministries. Next one. Uh, family devotion is inside the uh, digital bulletin or the physical one, uh, and uh, you, you can get it uh, through there. Offering details, this is for the week from 21st to 26th of uh, January. Okay, next one. Uh, this is a certificate in theology and spiritual formation. Uh, it is actually uh, from LAM uh, in conjunction together with the uh, Asbury Theological Seminary. Uh, you'll be having five subjects, okay? So each subject will be $500. Um, and they wanted to start sometime in uh, winter. So the enrollment's uh, ending date is on the 28th of April, 2024. Uh, the lecturer from Asbury will fly over to uh, Australia, to Melbourne, to physically uh, teach in the course. Uh, it will be one subject per semester. Okay? So we encourage brothers and sisters to uh, continue to inquire uh, from our sister Joy from this uh, land as well. Okay? Table tennis session. Uh, there will be a table tennis session from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. today. So details has already been shared in your EMC WhatsApp group. Okay, so please join them. Uh, Weekly Bible verse. Before we do the Weekly Bible verse, I do have another announcement here. Uh, we notice that uh, particularly a lot of places uh, after being used have not been uh, properly cleaned out or returned to... Uh, the normal uh, clean places, okay? Some of the places like library, the nursery, and also some of the Sunday school and all those. Uh, we do find sometimes, you know, bits and pieces of uh, food crumbs as well, okay? And uh, of course, uh, the toys and the books. Uh, so we encourage brothers and sisters, particularly parents, okay? Uh, because normally those places uh, may be frequent by children, we encourage you all to uh, look into that. Uh, and also, person who is in charge of program, uh, like fellowship meeting and all those, 
have a look around before uh, locking out the church. Okay, I think uh, we need to uh, uh, to be responsible and accountable to each other. It, it is our house, you know. Just imagine that if it is your house, you wouldn't let it be. You see, okay. All right, let us come to recite the fam, uh, Whitley Bible verse together. Nehemiah chapter 8, verses 10b. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Okay, so let us continue to uh, memorize Bible verses. And a lot of times, God will speak to us through all these verses. And of course, we do have combined service next Sunday. Remember that our combined service starts at 10 a.m., okay? And uh, we do have refreshment after the combined service. In Chinese, we call it Xin Yan Tuan Bai. We invite brothers and sisters okay, to bring Chinese New Year goodies. Okay? Uh, things that you uh, celebrate Chinese New Year and share the joy with brothers and sisters. I am sure that when you share the joy, I think you become more happy, happier as well, okay? and more joyful that we celebrate together. Oh? Okay, so next Sunday, 10 a.m. Uh, another one? Yes. This is a refreshment for the English service on Sunday. Uh, our four mums, the team, has already put out the roster. There are still some places that you can still, uh, uh, you know, some vacancy for you to serve, you see. I think it is a service of love uh, that we do to others, okay? Uh, and a lot of times, you know, it is uh, full of God's blessing as well. So please go to the naughty spot there. Uh, find the uh, uh, vacant uh, places that you can put down your name uh, and also at the same time uh, enjoy the service, okay? Accept the service that is being offered to you. It is the grace of God. Next one, uh, EMC camp. This is from 28 to 38, okay? Uh, I don't know the actual regis, uh, register number. Daniel, do you know the register number? Last time is, I think, 28, is it? Or something like that? Yeah, I think it's close to 30, okay? So we hope uh, you can uh, register earlier, okay? Uh, you know, if you want to encourage people to register, I think the best thing is you register yourself, <laughs> okay? Uh, so then you can encourage people, okay? Uh, then you, you can tell them, I have already registered for that, okay? All right, so you can get the QR code uh, and register online. Oh, 24, okay. <laughs> wow, still a lot of more to go, <laughs> okay? So please uh, try to make it, at least we go past uh, 30, I think, by this week. <laughs> okay, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think the organizing team, they are, of course, uh, very eager to see the number coming up as well. Huh? Okay, can I ask uh, Gabriel to come uh, to uh, report from the stewardship and finance? Good afternoon, pastors, brothers and sisters in Christ. Today, on behalf of the uh, Stewardship and Finance Committee, we would like to present the uh, 2024 budget for the church, as well as maybe just to go through uh, briefly the uh, ministries that where the money is going to be spent. <coughs> First of all, is for the uh, laity ministry support. So this year, we have allocated certain budgets to support the uh, ministry internship program. There's actually place for two ministry interns. Um, we've allocated about 12,000 for that, 6,000 for each intern. We have also allocated um, you know, funds for the uh, theological funds for the uh, living expense subsidies. So that, that's to encourage um, you know, our church members who wants to um, do theology studies and we can uh, sort of subsidize the uh, living expense. Um, next thing is, uh, oh, also as part of the laity ministry, we are also subsi subsidizing the uh, EMC camp in June. Uh, yep. We are also subsidizing or we are supporting the mis missionaries. We have, um, you know, the uh, Seymour families in Japan, the uh, Loftistas in Thailand, and also the Chu family as well as we're sponsoring one pastor in Nepal. On top of that, we are, uh, maybe next slide or so. 
on top of that, we're also doing missionary projects. So like the uh, MMM Melanchi flood relief project, we're building one house. A house is about $9,000, $9,500. We're also supporting the uh, MMM student, um, like the Cambodian student sponsorship. So we're sponsoring one primary, one senior student, and one uh, uni student. We have been doing this every year as well. Yep, next slide, please. We are also doing church improvement projects. Um, one of them is to, um, you know, do UPS or Power Wall. This is for the uh, multimedia system we have upgraded the last two years. Um, recent years, we have seen that there's more, um, you know, frequent power outages. So in case we, if we do have a power out outage on a Sunday then we have um, backup powers. We are also looking at changing the solar panels upstairs, um, up in the roof, as well as the inverters, because I think they've been more than, more than a decade, so it's about time to change them. Yep. We also require some funding to repair the uh, doors in the library and also the choir room at the back. Um, those doors, the wood on them has rotted and we have actually applied for planning permit to get them replaced by the council and got the permit to replace them. So now we just have to actually go and replace the doors. Yep, next one. We are also, this is something that you know, is carried over from last year. We are also you know, gonna carry out um, carpet replacement because this carpet here is probably here for two to three decades already. So it's um, time to replace them to, um, you know, to minimize tripping hazards and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, you can s the, the figures are a bit small, but what we're trying to do is um, you can see that overall all these ministries will require a budget of roughly 640,000 this year. And from that, we are trying to, um, you know, we are encouraging all the members in the church to pledge so that we reach this um, 640,000 amount. Actually, there's a bit of an adjustment. It's actually 595,000 because we're getting back some reimbursements from um, Wing Home Preaching Point. So the actual amount that we want to pledge for is 595. You can see that I've also done a very rough workout based on the 5,000 and 95,000. If we have roughly, you know, allocated 80 families, there's about, that's roughly works out to be about seven and a half thousand per family per year. And then if we break it down into each week, that's roughly a, a, a commitment of um, $140, or $140 per week. So it's really good that, you know, we can practice an act of faith to pledge to the church because we w what we'll do is we'll probably in the next few weeks, we'll actually distribute out a pledge form and each family or individuals who wish to commit and pledge a certain amount for the church, you can write it down in a form and send it back to us, probably via finance, myself or treasury from the English and Chinese sessions. We'll collect those forms, we'll keep it as private and confidential and probably only Musu and or pastor and ourselves will be, you know, looking at it and basically when you pledge you pledge it under tithing and by pledging that allows the uh, church leadership to work out and to you know to be committed to what we can do what are the ministry that we say we're going to plan to do and we have to do it because now we know this is the budget yep um, thank you very much for all your support um yep thank you Thank you, Brother Gabriel. Let us all now rise, and I promise you that this is the last time I'm going to ask you to stand um, for the chorus of a uh, response. Let us sing our last song, The Seven King.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we continue to come to you, Lord, we continue to ask you to give us a heart of humility. So that, Lord, when we approach your throne, we pray that your mercy and grace be upon us, continue to enable us and also strengthen us so that we live each day for God. And Heavenly Father, help us to realize that Jesus is worthy of everything that we put out. Everything that we uh, serve. And Lord, Jesus is our ultimate goal. And Jesus is our servant king, Lord. As demonstrated by the passage that we read today and uh, as bounded by the preaching, we pray the Heavenly Father that we ourselves will continue to serve our brothers and sisters with love. It is not just a service, but it is a service for love, a service that is doing to others as doing unto the Lord. As Jesus has said, if you do it to the least one among us, you are doing it unto the Lord. And Heavenly Father, help us to continue to keep it in our heart. Help us to serve you with all that we have, all that we can. And also at the same time, we know that we are doing it for the Lord. We are putting out our best for the Lord. It is not how much we put out, but it is how much Jesus is worthy to us. When we pray the Heavenly Father that Jesus is our treasure. It's the things that we uh, treasure most because we know that Jesus is the way to salvation. It is God's means to bring us into the family of God. We thank you. May the peace of God be in your heart. May the grace of God be in your words. May the love of God be in your hands. May the joy of God be in your soul and in the songs that your life sing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you 
and give you peace. Amen. seated. Have a word of silence prayer. Let us continue to give thanks for the refreshment that we are going to receive. Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you have done for us. Thank you for the Holy Communion today. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for the brothers and sisters for their love in preparing the refreshment so that we can enjoy the fellowship time together, so that we can get connected to each other. And also at the same time, it is a time for us to minister to one another. And Heavenly Father, may you continue to bless the food to our help, so that, Lord, we can continue to uh, live and to continue to serve uh, God and also to serve one another. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We welcome you to make your way to the annex and uh, have some refreshment and have a good time of fellowship. We'll see you all next week. Oh, remember, next week is combined service, 10 a.m., yeah?